Hello there guys and with me I've got uh, Kelly Clark who I'm absolutely delighted to announce has been made an ambassador of our World Football Club. Uh, welcome Kelly. Uh, tremendous that you've been made an ambassador within our World Football Club and I just want to take you right back to the very very start. How did it all start for you in the beginning? Uh, I started just going to watch my dad play football. He played for FC Porte years and years back. They used to play at Freakham kicking a ball about the side of the park and that was it. I started a, a football team uh, in Scape Strollers when I was seven, I think, six or seven. A few of us, my, my next door neighbour started at the same time, we all uh -huh. kicked a ball a bit together a lot of the time um, and it, it went from there. Uh, obviously I went up with Arbroath in Scape Strollers for as long as I could. Um, quite fortunate for my age to have never played for a boys team. Uh, so unusual for someone my age. You know, they, the, the town had a girls team. Uh -huh. um, a lot of people my age played with boys because there wasn't no girls teams in their area at that point in time. Um, but I played with our both for as long as I could and got to the point where they, they didn't they didn't have a, an older team that I could join and made the, the natural move through it for far. Yes, right. And I believe doing a wee bit of research on you during the week there that it was very difficult for you getting the Inverbrothic school team. Yeah. yeah, but obviously with your mum and dad if you eventually got you got the team yeah. and that. Billy Gunnan and that obviously yeah, what yeah. Gym. Billy Gunnan and Jim Duncan, they took uh -huh. on the school team when I was, I think it was when I was in, it was maybe towards the end of primary six or early primary seven and up until that point I'd always been told that girls played netball. Yeah. Um, similar story to though a lot of girls my age never played, uh, or, or had to play for a boys team. Um, so yeah, they came in and said, well, we'll come in, but Kelly's going to play. Because I used to kick, kick a ball a bit with, uh -huh. with their sons, they were both in my, my class at school. Um, and that was that. I was able to play football for the for the school. We obviously got to the Waters Cup final, scored mm, no goal over there. No, no. I've done also done a little bit of research this afternoon. I was speaking to Kevin Tindall, who was oh, just yeah. sitting in front of me this morning, and he said it was a five 0 victory against Freakham. Was that correct? I thought it was seven. Oh no! Well, Kevin says five, but he was it telling me five. that uh, your slight partner on the day was his son it Joe. Was, yes, it was. Right? Me, myself, and Joe Tindall started up front. Um, I scored down there. Yeah. And I got taken off as well. I've got some footage of it. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm absolutely tiny. You know, I'm, uh -huh. I'm so small. It was. I didn't feel that small at the time, but at that point in time, girls, we obviously move up to eleven a side a bit later than the boys. Yeah, yeah. So I think they dog just started playing eleven. I'd never played on eleven uh -huh. side park before the Watch Cup. Um, but yeah, I, I remember scoring a goal Tremendous. that day and the year the year before I'd been told I wasn't allowed to play. Yeah. Amazing. And a year later I was amazing scoring a goal in the final. It was amazing. So after all that, you, you've moved up to four for four for Farm and how did it go up there? Surprisingly quick. I went up and signed for the under-17s. Um, and how old were you at that time, Kelly? I was 15. I was 15 and I signed for the under-17s because again, in women's football, it's, there's two year gaps. So you're uh -huh. under 15, your next move is an under-17s team. So you always play for two years and after the the deal was I would go through I would train with our women's team to get that exposure yes. to female or women's football, um, adults football, and after a short time one of their centre backs got injured quite a bad injury. Uh, she was playing for Scotland over in Holland. She picked up a an ACL injury and I was drafted into the first team. I'd no, been training it. with them. I'd been training pretty well. Um, but yeah, I went up at the age of fifteen, played my first game and got kept in. No, was it? That was it. Women's football from age of 15 for me which was was massive you know it's i'm forever grateful to four for for exposing me to it at such yeah. a young age yeah. because it, it really develops you as we've got a great history with the girls yeah they? yeah um it really develops you as a player just playing against bigger better faster players from yeah. such a young age and playing with good good people as well you know they they were very patient with me and they brought me right. on massively yeah. then then you got the big move to Celtic. how did that all come about um by this point i'd moved down to Stirling for university uh it was really hard to travel back up to four for three times a week yeah. we trained pretty late so i was getting back to sterling midnight three times a week yeah. which was really it, it, was, it was really really tall and so celtic so came in they'd come in for me a few years prior to okay. that um, okay. i was still living in our both dying to go my mom and dad kind of went my neck and yeah. but it wasn't possible i was still at school yeah we trained yeah. away during glasgow so they came back in um, a couple of other teams as well but there was something about celtic that Drew me there. Yeah. Um, had friends that played for them at the time as well, which always helped. Yeah. And that from national setups and that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and I was at when I was at Stirling Uni, I was on a sort of a scholarship with the SFE. Uh -huh. So a few of the girls that I lived with played for Celtic as well. Yeah. And, and yeah, that was it. 
I went, I went to Celtic. And how old were you when you went to Celtic, Kelly? I was 18. Good. You've been there a few now, eh? uh, Nine years in January. Is it? Is nine years in shot? January, yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, so. I've, got, uh, <clears throat> I've got a few notes written down here. Uh, Sorry, uh, you're currently just jumping forward a wee bit here. Yeah. You're currently third in the league behind Rangers and Glasgow City, uh, in the top two finish, and you're getting a Champions League qualification now. I believe you played in the Champions League. How was that for you? Amazing. Um, maybe subconsciously had accepted that it might never happen. Uh, last year we went on an unbelievable run after our second COVID break and secured second place towards the end of the season, which meant Champions League for us. Uh, leading the team out in the Champions League was just a different experience altogether, you know, such a, a buzz within the squad. We flew over to Norway together, something that we've not been able to do for years because of Covid. Um, Amazing experience. Hearing the Champions League theme tune, it's That's just right. unbelievable. And are you going to tell us what you said in the huddle before the game though? Or are you going to keep uh, that It's still a secret, it's still good. a secret. Good, Kelly, good. Uh, start of the month here. You, you won the SWPL Cup with a 1-0 victory over Glasgow City and just as on my notes here, a crowd of 3,645 at Fir Hill. How was that for you? The best day of my life. Was it? Uh, it was, yeah, we we played so well which made it even better. It wasn't a scrappy 1-0, it wasn't penalties, you know, we, we played really well on the day. Uh -huh. It was a massive occasion, huge crowd for, for a female Amazing. game. Um, Amazing. My mum and my dad were in the stand. Good. Um, so it was, yeah, it was, it was amazing. Again, something that maybe subconsciously I'd accepted might never it happen, uh -huh. but fair play to the squad. You know, we had a really tricky draw the whole way through. We got Rangers, we got Hibs, them sitting yeah. in the final, and we were, I think we were fully deserved winners. Absolutely brilliant. So, what, what I, I know that you're, you're working as an accountant and you've got the wee dog paddy there, but <laughs> just give the viewers what's your typical week for you without going. Too personal, um, but just give us a rough <laughs> a rough week. Uh, so I also work. I'm a child accountant as well. Brilliant. Um, Monday, Tuesday, I work. Meant to be nine to half five, but I make up a few hours, and I'm about to tell you why. Wednesday, I work. Wednesday night, I train with our reserves team. Okay. okay just to make up my sessions. Yes. My team, they train in the mornings. Okay. The only day off a week is a, a Tuesday. Okay. I obviously can't train every morning, but so I the, train. So the majority of Celtic are full time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's only, I think there's only two of us now that okay. aren't full time. The other one's a police officer, so a similar yep. situation yep. to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I train with the team Thursday morning, Friday morning. I work afterwards, so I make up the hours that I spend yep. at training. I work. Uh, I train with the team on a Saturday morning, and I play on a Sunday. Brilliant, brilliant. So pretty full on, but yeah, it's full when on. you win, when you win a league cup, it, it's oh, all worth it. It's all it? worthwhile in the end of it. Yeah. Uh, just a few weeks ago, you got a wee call up for the, the national side. How did that make you feel? Surprised, but amazing. It was very last minute. They'd already been together for maybe a week. Uh -huh. um, it was a Saturday afternoon and I'd trained in the morning to play against a friend, uh, to play a friendly against Hamilton on Sunday and the manager phoned me at maybe about three o'clock and said, you're not going to be with the squad tomorrow and I thought I'd really annoyed him. He yeah, said, yeah. Aye. Why? He says, you're flying to Spain. Like, All right, you're, you've, you've been called into the A squad. So a very, very proud moment. Um, Absolutely. Been, I think the last call up my dad says was in 2017. Yeah, so it's been four so years. So a while of just hard work um, and knuckled down and yeah, 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 but rewarded for a couple of good performances. Yeah. So you've been appointed, as I say, I've, I've announced that you're going to be an ambassador within the club. What does that entail for you now? Is promoting? Do you promote the club? Is when you're obviously you're going to represent the club and you're uh, going to be playing. Yeah, I think for me, obviously focusing on girls football, I think what the community trust do with girls football in, in the town is amazing um, and hopefully I'm a, a face for the younger girls that you know they can you can look to me and say I, I want to do that or yeah. I can do that more than I want to do that yeah. you know I, I can do that Kelly started in our role she right. played for a girls team in our role she supported our growth on a Saturday oh. she came to Gayfield she was mascot at Gayfield she did everything that I've done and, and now she's a professional footballer, albeit I've got a job, but you know, there's there's a future for them to be professional footballers, not not with the side job that I've got, it's maybe just a few years too late, I was already settled on a job when the professional stuff happened in Scotland for females, but for these, for these young girls, 
maybe by that point you feel legal, be professional, who knows? The sky's, the sky's the limit for it at the minute. So it's just, it's just really, you know, putting a putting a face there for these for these young girls that Amazing. that just shows them if, if football is what they want to do, then now it's something that they can do. Great words, great words. Now, a little dicky bird tell me you had a budgie when you were younger. Would you want to tell the viewers what the budgie was called? Yeah, the budgie was called Lichty. I know um, it was called Lichty. <laughs> named by, I was probably named by myself and my brother. Um, like I said, we were season ticket holders, all of our, all of our youth, and my dad got us a budgie. It might have been for Christmas one year. Amazing. I'm not sure. I don't actually think it was. He got my gran a budgie. Um, but yeah, he was, he was called Lichty. Yeah. He was the best, best budgie. He used to land on your shoulder and that. But, so. Brilliant. Now, I actually know your dad, and I know how proud he is of you. Uh, and I just want to say, everyone in Argo is very proud of you, and thank you very much for the interview. Well, thank you, and I'm very proud to be a club ambassador. Well done, thank you. Thank you.